Welcome to Grace Time and good morning. How is everyone doing on this Monday, November the 21st? It is only three more days until Thanksgiving. And now Christmas is on a Sunday this year. So there are only five more Sundays before Christmas. So uh, you better get busy. So time keeps marching on, right? So, okay, so we will be wrapping up our little series we started on how to be Christ-like, and I will be causing you uh, to reflect upon your own life this morning. We won't be on very long, but it'll be very uh, good stuff. So as we wind down this series, you see, so okay. So Paul was an example, a model, and a pattern for us to follow. He was saved to show what God can do in a human being. From the passages that we studied, uh, we can see that there are two focal points in Paul's example for us. And the first uh, one is Paul's love for Christ. And second, Paul's love for people. And here's a question. What were the two great commandments Jesus gave during his earthly ministry? Well, when Jesus is answering the Pharisee, the Pharisee who was a skilled lawyer, by the way, uh, he asked Jesus, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And what did Jesus respond in Here's what he said in Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So as we can see, uh, they were challenging uh, Jesus, actually, is what was happening here, and trying to get him to answer. They were were just, uh, they saw where they made the, uh, he silenced the Sadducees, I guess, and so he was really challenging Christ. So Paul had a passion for Christ. Paul was Christ-centered. Paul gave up everything that he had attained, as well as the privileges that came along with all of that. and and In order to live the Christian life, Paul was willing to suffer for Christ. He was bold with the gospel, and he suffered for preaching to unbelievers, right? And Paul did everything for the glory of God. Paul also had a passion for people. He was self-supporting and not lazy. He lived with integrity. He cared for others, and he respected their consciences. So what about you? Are you living a Christ-centered life? God uses our life experiences. An example of this can be found in Paul's life. Paul's travels and imprisonments led him to write many letters to early churches, some which we can read today, right? Likewise, we need to let God utilize our life experiences for his purposes. Paul was saved to be a pattern to all future believers. And like Timothy and Titus, all believers are Paul's spiritual children, if you will, if you think of it that way. So the question is, are you following his example? Are you following Christ's example? What are you passionate about? Does it bring you to live a Christ-centered life? What are your priorities? Do you prioritize Christ in your life? Are you passionate for God and godliness? Are you passionate about people? 
If you prioritize your life correctly, having a Christ-centered life mixed with a disciplined Bible study life, along with a disciplined prayer life, and you are active in a good, solid Bible truth teaching uh, body of Christ that is preaching uh, the word and, and, and where you can fellowship with real deep water faith Christians several times a week, you will persevere in life. Despite the difficulties you may face in life, Paul told the Philippians, Keep your eyes on those who live as we do. So, God saved us to be a pattern to other believers. And other unbelievers, by the way. What example are you setting for others? We need to be beware of self-centeredness. Okay? And we need to be willing to suffer for Christ. We should honor Christ in all that we do, and and we should say, and well, we should say and do things that glorify the Lord. And we need to look at people with compassion through Christ's eyes, and we need to be bold with the gospel. Listen, if we do not do it, who will? Let's pray together. Holy Father, just thank you so much for another day. And Lord, we just thank you for the gift of life. And Lord, we just uh, pray that we would just uh, pick up what you're laying down in your word of truth and apply it in our lives in order for the those unbelievers in this broken, dark, and evil world to see the, uh, see the light in us and see Christ through us in order for them to come to have a relationship and accept him as their personal Savior. It is in your Son's name, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for joining me here on Grace Time. I'm glad that you did. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And uh, you can like, share, and comment out on these videos. Uh, when you subscribe, it just it allows you to have the opportunity anytime a new video pops up, you get notified so that you can watch it. And like I say, I try to be as impactful in as short amount of time as I possibly can in these videos. And so uh, I will also tell you that if you're ever in the Central Florida area, and specifically Citrus County, Florida, uh, come to see us in Inverness, Florida. Come to Whispering Pines Park, where we're currently meeting temporarily at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, swing on by and, and come check out Grace Place. Uh, it's a wide open, fun, loving body of Christ that is just serious. And in the deep water faith, people wanting to just serve the Lord and, and, and reveal their joy as they do. So anyway, come by and see us. The website that you can check it out is Grace Place. 352.org. Again, that's graceplace 352.org. It's it's on this uh, channel. You can find it. Uh, click on it and go check us out and see what we're all about and find out where we are and come visit us. And you'll have a great time. And I'll be back here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. The good Lord willing. And until next time, may God bless you.